Ferdinand de Saussure's Theory of Structuralism Ferdinand de Saussure, a Swiss linguist, laid the foundational stones for modern linguistics and semiotics with his theory of structuralism. He introduced the concept of the linguistic sign, which is composed of two parts, the signifier and the signified. The signifier is the form that the sign takes, it is the physical form of the words or sounds as we perceive them. The signified, on the other hand, is the mental concept that the signifier refers to. Saussure's insight was that the relationship between signifier and signified is arbitrary, there is no inherent connection between them, but rather a social agreement. This means that the meaning of words is not fixed by their nature but is established through the conventions of language used by a community. Understanding this dynamic helps us see language as a system of interrelated elements where each word's meaning is shaped by its relationship with others. This structural approach opens up ways of analyzing not just language, but any system of signs, such as mythology, fashion, and cultural norms, revealing the underlying structures of our social world. Charles Sanders Peirce's Theory of Signs Charles Sanders Peirce, an American philosopher and logician, developed a comprehensive theory of signs that he called semiotics. Unlike Saussure, Peirce's model includes three categories of signs, icon, index, and symbol. An icon refers to signs that resemble what they signify, such as a photograph that visually represents its subject. An index has a direct, causal link to its object, like smoke indicating fire. A symbol, however, has no inherent connection to what it represents, its meaning is purely conventional and learned, such as language or road signs. Pierce's semiotics extends beyond just linguistic signs to include all kinds of sign processes. He saw the universe as fundamentally composed of signs and interpretative processes, which he called semiosis. This ongoing process of interpretation means that signs are not static but are part of an infinite chain of meanings. Each sign or representation leads to another, creating a dynamic, interconnected web of understanding. Pierce's theory is profound because it suggests that understanding and meaning are not merely about static relationships but are active, ongoing processes that form the core of all communication and thought. Click subscribe to this channel to get more topics you love. Roland Barthes Mythologies Roland Barthes, a French literary theorist and critic, explored how societal norms and values are embedded and communicated through cultural texts and practices in his work Mythologies. Barthes analyzed mundane objects and cultural phenomena, from wrestling to wine and milk, as systems of signs that convey specific messages and values of a culture. His approach is particularly known for the concept of myth, which he describes as a type of speech chosen by history that transforms cultural signs into natural ones. In Barth's view, myths serve to naturalize particular beliefs, values, and ideologies, making them appear timeless and universal rather than historical and culturally specific constructs. For instance, when examining the portrayal of wine in French society, he shows how it is imbued with meanings about French identity and superiority. This process of myth-making obscures the underlying cultural and ideological implications, making it seem natural to associate wine with French culture. Barth's analysis is profound because it reveals the layers of meaning behind cultural practices and objects, showing how they reinforce certain worldviews and social orders. His work encourages us to question and decipher the everyday signs around us, understanding them as carriers of cultural meaning rather than neutral or natural phenomena. Umberto Eco's Theory of Unlimited Semiosis Umberto Eco, an Italian semiotician and novelist, introduced the concept of unlimited semiosis, which posits that the interpretation of a text or a sign can lead to an infinite chain of other interpretations. Each interpretation generates more signs and meanings, suggesting that understanding can never be fully complete or closed. This idea challenges the notion that texts have a single, fixed meaning that can be definitively uncovered. Eco's perspective is rooted in the idea that texts and cultural artifacts are open works, 
capable of multiple, and potentially unlimited, readings. Each reader brings their own cultural background, personal experiences, and intellectual history to their interpretation, which means that the same text can be understood in vastly different ways by different people. This theory has profound implications for how we think about meaning in cultural contexts. It suggests that culture itself is a complex web of signs that are constantly being interpreted and reinterpreted. By acknowledging the limitless possibilities of interpretation, ECO encourages a more dynamic engagement with texts, where the focus is not on finding the correct interpretation but on exploring the richness of potential meanings. This approach fosters a deeper appreciation of the complexity of cultural artifacts and their role in human communication and understanding. Roman Jacobson's Communication Model Roman Jacobson, a Russian-American linguist and semiotician, significantly contributed to the understanding of how language functions, through his communication model and the classification of the functions of language. Jacobson outlined six key functions of language that correspond to elements of the communication process, the referential, emotive, conative, phatic, metalinguistic, and poetic functions. Referential function relates to the context and the information being communicated. Emotive function expresses the speaker's attitude and emotions. Conative function pertains to the effect on the listener, often seen in commands and requests. Phatic function serves to establish or maintain contact between speakers. Metalinguistic function involves discussing or clarifying language itself. Poetic function focuses on the message for its own aesthetic and rhetorical purposes. Jacobson's model is profound because it demonstrates that communication is not merely about transferring information but involves a complex interplay of multiple functions that reflect and shape human relationships and social structures. His distinction between metaphor and metonymy, where metaphor involves substitution based on similarity and metonymy based on contiguity, further enriches our understanding of how language constructs meaning. This theory helps explain how different aspects of language contribute to the varied and rich ways in which we communicate, offering insights into everything from everyday conversation to literary theory and beyond. Algirdas Julian Gramas Structural Semantics Algirdas Julian Gramas, a French-Lithuanian semiotician, developed a method of structural semantics known for its focus on binary oppositions and its detailed grammar of narrative. His approach, often encapsulated in what is known as the semiotic square, provides a tool for deeper analysis of texts by examining the complex relationships and structures within narratives. Grema's semiotic square helps to map out the fundamental elements and their oppositions within a story, such as life-slash-death, presence-slash-absence, or good-slash-evil. This model extends beyond simple binary pairs by including their complementary and contradictory terms, thus allowing for a more nuanced understanding of how these elements interact and oppose each other within a text. Central to Grema's theory is the concept of actants, key roles within narratives that can be filled by characters or even abstract concepts. These roles include subjects, seekers, objects, sought for, helpers, opponents, senders, and receivers. This framework helps to dissect the narrative structure, revealing how roles and relationships drive the narrative forward and contribute to the overall meaning of the text. Grema's work in structural semantics is profound because it systematizes the way we analyze stories, offering a clear framework that can be applied to a wide range of narratives. This approach not only enhances our understanding of literature but also of cultural narratives and how they convey complex social values and structures. His theories underscore the deep-seated patterns in how humans think and communicate through stories, making his insights invaluable across disciplines, from literary studies to cultural analysis and beyond. Louis Jelmslev's Glossomatics Louis Jelmslev, a Danish linguist, introduced a highly formalized approach to language analysis known as glossomatics. His theory is distinct in focusing on the form of language rather than its substance. Jelmslev argued that language should be studied as a system of signs that operate within their own system, independent of the actual content they communicate. This led to a dual division in his framework, expression and content. 
both of these layers can further be divided into form and substance. In glossomatics, the form refers to the deep structural aspects of language that organize how signs function and interact, while the substance deals with the specific physical and mental implementations of these signs, like sounds or concepts. Jelmslev's work is profound because it provides a lens to see language as a self-contained system, where meanings are generated by the structural interrelations within the language itself, rather than by reference to external realities. This theory offers a way to analyze not just what language is saying, but how it says anything at all, emphasizing the arbitrary nature of sign systems and their independence from the physical world. Christian Metz's Semiotics of Cinema Christian Metz, a French film theorist, applied semiotic theories to the realm of cinema, exploring how films communicate meaning through a complex interplay of visual and auditory signs. Metz's work is groundbreaking in that it treats films as a language, a system of signs that viewers learn to read. According to Metz, a film's narrative is constructed much like a language, using cinematic codes that are culturally learned and understood. Metz identified several key cinematic codes, including the iconic code, images on screen that resemble their real-world counterparts, the symbolic code, conventional signs that need to be learned, like the language of editing, and codes of movement and expression. His analysis extends to the ways films manipulate time and space, creating a diegesis, or filmic world, which audiences come to accept as real within the context of viewing. By applying semiotic analysis to film, Metz opens up a detailed understanding of how films generate emotional and intellectual responses. His insights help explain why certain films resonate universally or culturally, showing how filmmakers use specific codes not just to tell stories but to evoke deeper psychological engagement from the audience. Metz's theories are instrumental for anyone looking to understand the underlying mechanisms through which cinema operates as a powerful form of modern communication and art. Julia Kristeva's Intertextuality Julia Kristeva, a Bulgarian-French philosopher and psychoanalyst, introduced the concept of intertextuality, which revolutionized the way texts are understood. Intertextuality suggests that the meaning of a text is not isolated within the text itself but is instead shaped by the relationships and connections it has with other texts. According to Kristeva, every text is a mosaic of quotations, and any text is the absorption and transformation of another. This theory implies that reading a text involves tracing the complex network of textual references and influences that inform it. For instance, understanding a novel might require considering how it reflects, contradicts, or dialogues with previous works, genres, or cultural narratives. Kristeva's concept extends beyond literary texts to include any cultural artifact that can be seen as a text, from films and paintings to social practices. Kristeva's insights are profound because they challenge the notion of originality and autonomy in artistic creation, highlighting the communal and dialogic nature of cultural production. This approach enriches our understanding of texts by acknowledging their multidimensional contexts and the broader cultural discourse they engage with. It invites readers to engage in a more dynamic and layered exploration of texts, seeing them as part of an ever-evolving cultural conversation. Yuri Lotman's Semiosphere Yuri Lotman, a Russian semiotician, introduced the concept of the semiosphere, which he described as the semiotic space, necessary for the existence and functioning of languages and other sign systems. Similar to the way the biosphere is essential for biological processes, the semiosphere encompasses the cultural and intellectual environment where all communication and meaning-making occur. Lotman's semiosphere is not just a collection of individual texts and communications but a dynamic field where various semiotic processes interact. This space is characterized by its boundary-crossing nature, where internal and external structures of culture meet and engage. The semiosphere is divided into the core, where more stable and homogeneous meanings reside, and the periphery, where meanings are more dynamic and diverse, often leading to innovative semiotic creation. Lotman's theory is profound in how it conceptualizes cultural interactions. By viewing culture through the lens of a semiosphere, 
we see how meanings and information are not merely transmitted but actively created through interactions within this semiotic space. This model helps explain cultural evolution and change, as new meanings and understandings emerge at the borders of different cultural systems within the semiosphere.